So here I am in my happy place, pulling pistons and rods out of a good old fashioned American 3D3. Mwah! But all is not well in internal combustion land. And I, and I had to stop and I got to do this video because this is right along the lines of all of these other videos we've done recently on overcomplication, over tech, or in repairability. Some of the things that are happening with engines that are just, just beyond belief. The Hellcat motors ate themselves alive. People claiming that they, they took them apart and they were missing main bearings. The General Motors fiasco, the 6.2, where they're recalling 850,000 6.2s. We even did a video like, did we forget how to build engines? When did we forget how to build engines? But they're having failures. Those engines are going down the road. They're, they're chucking rods. They're going down the road. Massive recall on those. But now here's the latest one. And this one, honestly, it, it boggles my mind because I, I cannot fathom how a manufacturer with the size and experience and the reputation of Nissan could produce this variable compression engine that is now under recall. They're recalling between 450 and 480,000 of them built since 2019. So they put these things in uh, Altimas, in Rogues, um, uh, Infinity models. It, it's a widely used engine. And honestly, when it came to market, I didn't even pay any attention to this thing because it's like, well, all right, variable compression. Yeah, they've been building variable compression engines for as long as they've had variable valve timing. Because that, okay, so for you guys that aren't familiar, engine compression actually comes in two flavors. One of them is um, mathematical and one of them is theoretical, but they're both compression. So the mathematical is simply the amount of volume of the cylinder. So when the piston's at, at the bottom of its stroke, the amount of volume of that cylinder versus the amount of volume that's left when the piston's up at the, at the top of the stroke. So that's where you get a 10 to one compression ratio. It's like 10 times and you squeeze it up to one times that. That's called the static compression ratio. And it's mathematical, it's a fixed number. Then you've got dynamic compression ratio. And actually, the dynamic compression ratio kind of takes precedence over the static compression ratio because based on camshaft timing events, you can have a very high static compression ratio and a very low dynamic compression ratio at any given RPM, depending on how you're phasing the cams. So a variable compression engine, the phrase didn't even catch my attention. It's like, okay, well, they, they just throw in a name on VTEC, a different name on, on VTEC. No. No, as I have found out, it's much deeper than that. This is steampunk meets 21st century automobile manufacturer. I, it still boggles my mind. All right, so these engines, two varieties of them with the same concept. There's a 1500cc three cylinder, turbocharged, all these are turbocharged, and there's a 2000cc four cylinder. They all have variable valve timing. They all have direct injection, which is, we know what kind of fiasco that leads to. But they also have an actual mechanical linkage. It's crazy. They have an actual mechanical linkage that raises and lowers the piston in relation to the crankshaft. Now, now this is a sacred relationship, right? Every single piston engine, internal piston powered internal combustion engine. Now we're not talking about rotaries, obviously, but every piston powered internal combustion engine since the very beginning of time, since the 1800s, has used a very direct formula, something that hasn't changed. Technology has not been able to put a dent in this. And that's a direct link called a connecting rod between the piston and the crank. Well, there goes the bearing. Between the piston and the crankshaft. This fixed relationship with the piston going up and down and the rod swirling around on the crankshaft has been unchanged for way over 100 years, 150 years or so at this point, and literally 
billions and billions of examples of these things have been produced all over the world and are produced today all over the world. But not at Nissan, no. No, they decided they were gonna go a whole different direction. That all of the experimentation that has been, you know, put into all the experimentation that's surrounding the internal combustion engine for the last 150 years means nothing, means nothing. They're gonna reinvent the wheel. They're gonna create a variable compression ratio engine that actually raises and lowers the piston in relation to the crank pin. Who could have possibly thought this was a good idea? All right, so now these things, they're, they're, they're breaking. There's a recoil. Um, 480,000 of my belief. Now, Nissan claims there's only 0.39%, less than half of 1% of these engines that meet the criteria for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to issue a recall, meaning that they're creating a safety hazard. They're dropping dead as they're going down the road. Right? That's 0.39%. Okay, I'll give you that. But the failure rate in general where these things are smoking where they're just they're dropping dead and not causing traffic issues they're having all kinds of problems with them noises low oil pressure locked up okay they're having all sorts of engine failures with them and nissan and we're going to talk about this in, in, in a minute and nissan is blaming a potentially defective main bearing all right so Let's talk about the way this thing works and how insane this is. Now remember, this relationship, piston, rod, crankshaft, unchanged, that people have tried, lots of people have tried to, to mess around with this and come up with all different kinds of things, but only one method has ever actually seen regular production in all engines all around the world for all time, and that's this, because it works. It works, it's simple, it's foolproof. Nissan, created a Rube Goldberg device that starts with an actuator that's controlled by the engine's computer. The actuator sits on the side of the block. It uses a rod, a link, that goes between itself, the actuator, and a jack shaft that's inside the engine. From the jack shaft, there's another link that goes to this diamond-shaped link that's wrapped around the crankshaft, takes the place of the big end of the connecting rod. And then from that, there's yet another link that takes the place of the connecting rod that goes to the piston. The engine's computer sends a signal based on demand to this actuator, which is a stepper motor. And the actuator moves all of these various linkages and bell cranks back and forth to attain between an eight to one compression ratio under full turbo boost and a 14 to one compressor ratio, not under boost. All right, now never mind that all of these parts have got to be moving and they all have to have bearings. They all have to have adequate oiling. But the engine's computer, the car's computer, needs to coordinate all of these things. The boost, the variable valve timing, the stepper motor, this actuator, and keep it all in sync. And I'm going to tell you what a fatal flaw to this is. And only somebody who's run like, okay, my experience, my background is with nitro cars. So I know detonation. I know the signs of detonation. I know how quickly it can happen. I know the damage that it causes. And I'm telling you, this is what's going on with these engines. So all of these things have to be coordinated now. Ignition timing, injector timing, cam timing, actuator timing, boost control. All of them have to be controlled simultaneously to create this balance of pressure in the combustion chamber. The problem is the computer can move fast enough to keep up with what's happening in the combustion chambers, but the stepper motor and all of these other linkages can't. So what you'll have is this thing varies between eight to one and 14 to one compression. And what you're gonna have is you'll have periods of time where your, the piston is way up there creating the 14 to one compression, you'll get boost come in, it'll start to lower the piston, move the actuator back to lower the compression and drop the compression ratio. Then if the driver was to, let's say, suddenly pull his foot off the gas and then dive back into it, 
The computer can sense that all of these things is happening, and it can change things like the ignition timing, it can change the injector timing instantly. It can't change the movement of the actuator and all of these other linkages instantaneously. That takes a bit of time, a fraction of a second. But during that fraction of a second, the piston is gonna go through a couple of cycles of heavy detonation. Now, Nissan is, is claiming that it's a bearing defect, that this problem is a bearing defect. A bearing, just like that one, because this engine uses regular bearings all throughout it. Lots and lots of them, because you need them for the crankshaft, you need them for the link, you need them for the jack shift, you need lots of bearings to make this thing happen. And they've all got to be oiled. And they've all got to be oiled with 020 oil, because you need a thin oil because of the cam timing. But they're claiming that it's a, a bearing defect that's causing this. But here's the thing, and here's how I know they're lying. There's two, two ways I know they're lying. The first is that if there's a bearing defect, it'll show up instantly. All right, so if the bearing is defective in that, let's just say it's, it's too thick, there isn't enough oil clearance, well, you'll know that right away because the engine won't last. It, as soon as the thing is under load, the, the oil, the oil uh, film between the bearing and the crankshaft will be shoved out of the way by heat. It'll be disturbed by the heat and you'll get contact between the shell and the journal. It'll grab the shell and spin the bearing. That's what happens when the bearing is too tight. If it's too loose, you'll have no oil pressure. You'll have noises. Duck -duck 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 -duck. You'll have all kinds of symptoms that it's too loose. And too loose generally won't cause failure. It'll cause noise, but not failure. Other than that, the bearing is an eternal piece given it being operated as it's supposed to be. Meaning that while the engine is running, it has a flow of oil over itself. It's when the bearing, when this is operating as designed, it never comes in contact with any type of metal, only a liquid surface. And because of that, in theory, if you were, let's say, start an engine and let it run for a thousand years, Okay, as long as the bearing has an adequate flow of oil during the time it's running, it, it'll never fail. Bearings never die, they're murdered. So something is murdering the bearings in this engine, in this, this variable compression engine. Now, it could be an oil starvation issue, that's a possibility. It could be the oil too thin, you know, the, the 0 W20, it's a very thin oil, right? That could be a problem too, but I don't think the engineers, I, I, I think everything's gonna be spec for adequate volume, given they're not, they're not complete idiots. Just the ones who designed and approved this Mickey Mouse Rube Goldberg variable compression system. My bet is that these engines are going through brief detonation cycles that are pounding the bearing. And when you pound the bearing, it deforms. I, again, this is something you have to be familiar with uh, very high solar pressure race engines to really know what I'm talking about, although it can happen to any engine. When a bearing gets pounded, it'll get deformed, it'll lose its crush. When it loses its crush, it can spin. That'll give you a problem. Again, the bearing don't die, it's murdered. Now, to back this up, Nissan is saying that when, as they're recalling these engines, they're checking the oil for bearing material. And if they don't find any bearing material, listen to this, they're going to change the oil and then reprogram the computer. Okay? So, what Nissan basically is saying is that we have a software problem that's causing these engines to self-destruct. The, the massive overcomplication of it is only part of it. But the software bug that I think that they're, they're after, why they have to reprogram these things when they bring them in for the recall, is because they've either got to slow down or speed up the action based on an actuator and all the monkey motion that raises and lowers the piston in relation to changing engine conditions, engine circumstances. I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell you exactly what they're after there, but I can tell you that if the engine isn't, if they don't find metal in the bearing, they're changing oil and they're reprogramming the computer. This is what they're saying, this is what Nissan is saying. It's absurdity. I hope they discontinue these things. And God forbid you end up with one. Now they have like a 60,000 mile warranty on them. 
I, I don't see, even under the best circumstances, there is so much moving around inside this engine, so many different bits and pieces, actuators and links and, and craziness, just craziness. There's no way it can live for the number of cycles. Just, just metal fatigue all on its own. There's so many different bits that can get fatigued through all of this. There's no way this can live the kind of life that a well cared for conventional piston engine, you know, take take really good care of an engine, just the mechanical part of it, not the stuff that's going on around it. Take really good care of the bottom end and the rings, the bearings, the rod, the piston, all of that can live for hundreds of thousands of miles, a million miles. Keep giving it fresh, clean oil. Don't abuse it. Don't overheat it. Just use it as intended, right, and, and maintain it. There's no limit to how long these things can last. But now, add a stepper motor, add an actuator link, add a, a, a jack shaft, add another link, add a bell crank, add another link. Oh, please, it's ridiculous. Stay away from these things like the plague. If you know anybody in the market for a used car looking at Nissans, let them know about this thing. Because it's this is just... Bad news. I sincerely hope there's a class action lawsuit here. There, there should be, absolutely should be a class action lawsuit because this is negligent engineering. Period. The end. <sighs> and, and, and I look at my happy little 383 here, right? Just, just a beautiful old piece of American engineering. Well, not just American engineering. All, all engines built all around the world with these basic principles and this basic simplicity. They lived long, happy lives. They're almost eternally rebuildable. That Nissan VC motor, it's, it's got it's got sprayed on cylinder walls, right? You know, with a night, Nicacel, whatever the hell they call it these days. Yeah, not rebuildable. Nothing in there is rebuildable. It's completely throwaway. I'm gonna stay in my happy place, but occasionally I'll stick my head out and make reports on the latest fiasco because you know, it, it's what I do. I'll see you tomorrow.